Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. We've built our CNC machine. It's the X-Carve from Inventables. I thought before we actually do any further work with it, I should just go through uh, the logic of how you can get a computer with a drawing on it to tell uh, a machine like this how to uh, go about cutting out or carving uh, whatever it is that you've designed. Now, let me just first describe the components uh, that are involved in the process. We've got the computer. In my case, it's a laptop sitting there. And then that's connected via a USB cable uh, to uh, this little black box here. And for sake of argument, we'll call this a controller. And basically, it's an Arduino computer and what Inventables call a G-Shield. It's two uh, uh, circuit boards uh, which are joined together. This is a power supply, uh, and this powers uh, the whole of uh, the uh, CNC machine itself. It powers the motors uh, and so on, uh, and it also provides the power for the controller box here. Now, regardless uh, what uh, software you might be running, regardless of what computer you've got, uh, at some point you need to install on the computer the drivers uh, that allow the computer to talk to, in this case, the thing I'm calling the controller. Uh, and that's something that we did uh, during the uh, setup uh, phase of the construction. In order for you, as a human being, to uh, tell uh, this little lot to do something meaningful, uh, you need some form of software that allows you to design, and that's what we call CAD, Computer Aided Design. Uh, and then once that design is finished, you want another bit of software, uh, uh, Computer Aided Manufacturer, CAM, so it's CAD and CAM, uh, which then takes your design and sends it to this controller in a form that it will understand so that it can then uh, tell the CNC what to do. I've got the computer running an application uh, which Inventables have created. It's a free bit of software which you can use. All you have to do is log into the uh, application through the Inventables website and you're there. And it's called Easel. Now, I'm not going to describe how Easel works or anything now, uh, but I'm just going to show you that I've drawn uh, here a word. It says coding. Uh, and I've then uh, gone through my design process in producing that. I can move it around, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, uh, I can put lines through, I can put triangles or whatever it is I want to do. Uh, but that's my design for now. And on the right here, uh, Easel gives you a, a pictorial representation of what it might look like if it was carved uh, on a piece of wood. So I've done my computer-aided design, that's the word coding, and now I want to let this application take over the computer-aided manufacturer for me so I don't have to think about it. I do have to tell the machine about the particular cutter that I'm using. Uh, I have to tell the machine uh, when I've put the cutter in the home position. Uh, and I also need to tell the machine uh, what sort of rate of cutting that I'm happy uh, for this cutter uh, to be doing in the material that I've got selected. And that's all done within the easel application. So there's my design, and now it's got to come out of this computer and go through this controller into the CNC. And it comes out of this computer in a form uh, called G-code. You don't need to understand what G-code is, but I'm just telling you the name because you'll hear me mention it again. So G-code comes out through the USB connection to the controller. The controller then interprets that G-code. The G-code might say, draw a circle or draw a line from point A to point B, or whatever it might be, or raise or lower the bit. Uh, the controller receives that, that, uh, those instructions and then uh, does some clever stuff in order to break those instructions down into the controls needed for all the motors on the machine. Now on the machine we've got an X motor, it's out of view but it's at the back here and that makes this whole uh, tool and assembly here move from left to right which is the X direction. That's X going positive and that's X going negative. Uh, there's a pair of motors, one here and one here, 
which make this whole rig move forward and backwards, and that's the y direction, and it's positive going that way. And then there's a motor here, uh, which causes the spindle to raise or lower, and this is the z direction. And so we've got three uh, degrees of uh, movement. Now the controller has taken the instructions from the computer in the form of G-code, and it then breaks those instructions down into everything that's needed to get these motors moving, which gets the tool moving to the right place to do the particular bit of work that you want it to do. Now, these motors that you, you find on uh, CNC machines are called stepper motors. And basically, they're very, very uh, accurate motors that when they receive a signal, they will move a very, very small and accurately determined amount. And so it's through those that you get the overall accuracy of the CNC machine. So the controller will tell each motor uh, how much it needs to move. In the case of the two motors which are here, which control the Y movement, then uh, one receives a positive signal, the other receives a negative signal, so they're both moving in the same direction uh, in uh, unison uh, with each other. And it's possible for the spindle to be uh, controlled. It's uh, switching on and switching off can be controlled, again, through the controller, and that's something that you would uh, select or determine in your setup of the software that you're using. Uh, I like to have manual spindle control at the moment because I'm still learning. Now, when it comes to other CNC applications, and I've got VCarve Pro here, uh, they don't necessarily have the ability to output in G-code. Remember G-code? Really important because this lot over here understands G-code. Now, to make sure that uh, your Vectrix soft software understands G-code, uh, you need to get a little file. It's a post-processor file, uh, and you can download it from the Inventables website, and then you pop it into uh, the correct directory on your laptop or PC uh, so that the uh, VCarve Pro software can use it uh, to uh, manipulate uh, the drawing or whatever it is you've created and output it as a uh, G-code file. If you go to the, the uh, Inventables website and under the heading of machines, there's another heading under that called software, and then under that you'll find uh, VCarve Pro. And th that's this page there. And towards the bottom of this page, uh, you'll see a number of files where, which you can download. And there's one here which is called xcarve postp.zip. And that is the post-processor file that you need in order to get uh, VCarve Pro talking to this G-code lot over here. Download that, and you need to put that into a uh, particular directory where VCarve Pro has all of its other uh, post-processor files. And those files end in the extension dot pp. You would think I'd written them, wouldn't you? Um, anyway, dot pp. Find where uh, they are stored on your PC according to your uh, installation and then pop that um, uh, g-code post-processor file into that directory. Now the story doesn't end there. We also need another piece of software which can take the G-code file uh, that uh, VCarve Pro has created, which now sits on this machine, so it's a file of G-code sitting here, but somehow it's got to be sent uh, to the XCarve and its controller. And so you need a piece of software which will send it uh, in the correct manner uh, so that little lot over there can understand what's going on. And this program is called the Universal G-Code Sender. And if you put that into Google, uh, you can find a website from which you can download it, and it's absolutely free. Uh, the uh, website is called GitHub, uh, and you'll find on there uh, a, a place where you can download it. Uh, now, in order for uh, these to work, uh, you do need to have uh, the latest version of Java installed on your PC or laptop. Now, when you open up uh, the Universal G-Code Sender, uh, the very first thing to do is to tell it to open the COM port. Uh, that's the COM port that you set up. You remember the, the little uh, bit of software from the Arduino website 
that's uh, sitting in here, the drivers for this, uh, that selects the COM port. And mine is COM3, so that's now open. And you see a sort of bit of red here uh, saying that it's not ready yet. And the reason is you've got to send a homing command uh, to uh, the XCARVE. And you do that by typing $H. And the machine is going into a homing cycle now. So it's gone all the way up to the top and it's now going to come all the way over here. And it's found those limit switches and that's my homing position uh, for this machine. But for this particular job, uh, I don't want uh, this to be the reference point. I want the reference point to be at this cross section here on my uh, piece of uh, wood. So you can go into a machine control mode here and you can start moving things around. Now be careful because mine uh, defaults to uh, one inch per click of the button. So this is X, one inch at a time, which is quite a, a big chunk, particularly if you're going in the Z direction downwards. So you need to be careful. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, in a minute, change that uh, to something slightly safer. I'm going to put it one millimeter per click. And you can see that's moving over. I'll do one movement downwards. And from here on in, I'm changing uh, this to millimeters, and each click is one millimeter. Uh, and I could make it even finer. And the trick now is to get uh, this machine positioned such that my a spindle is over my crosshairs. So I've, I'm going to adjust this a little bit now. That's Y adjusted, X coming over. Let's get the Z down a little bit. Looking pretty close. I'll now use my piece of paper. That's it, just one back, that's fine. So that's my uh, X, Y and Z set up for my new homing position. But I've got to tell the software, hey, this is the uh, relative homing position uh, for the piece of uh, work that I'm going to send you. So back here, I go, there's a, uh, a tab here that says commands, and I can now give a command. And you don't have to learn every single G code command, but uh, $H, which we did to do the homing cycle, you need to remember that one, and this one, which is... G92, followed by a space, then X0, space, Y0, space, Z0. And I'm not sure if you need those spaces, but uh, uh, I've done them, and then hit return. And what that has now done is it said G92 means what I now tell you is going to be the absolute position for this particular job. And so it's X0, Y0, Z0 for where that is right now. Next, we want to send it a file. So we go into file mode up here. And I can browse. And my file is here. I'm going to open it. And so my file, which I generated in VCarve Pro, I then processed the toolpaths and it came out as a, a, a file in G-code and now that's been sucked into here and now Universal G-code sender is going to send a stream of uh, data in G-code uh, to the X-carve. I'm going to turn my spindle on and I'm going to press I'm now going to press the send button. Well, that's it, and quite appropriately, that's the end of this uh, video. And I hope it's been of use to you. I hope you've now got a, a better feeling for how easy it is uh, in reality to transfer data from your computer, where you've created your wonderful design, all the way through to the CNC machine. Now, if you've got any questions, I'll do my best to answer them, but bear in mind, I am still very much a novice at this. Uh, why not try the Inventables Forum? Have a look around, you might find answers directly, or you can pose questions to other members of the forum. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>